Hi, perfect. So I'll just do a quick little inter introduction. Uh, my name is Kara Clark. I'm on the board of Create Community Studios. Uh, welcome everyone to our first workshop for Saturday of Create-a-thon. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm just going to let Kimberly in quickly. Um, so yes, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, just to give you a little background, Create is a nonprofit dedicated to a safe space for art making um, and, and really with the goal of creating a beneficial experience of art making. And we really believe that the arts should be accessible and affordable to everyone. Um, so that's really deeply rooted into our mission statement. And our goal is to use expressive arts as an equalizer across cultural barriers and economic barriers to promote art making uh, with underrepresented and marginalized communities in mind. Um, so for Create-a-thon, we have a goal for February to raise $10,000 before the end of the month. Um, all of our donors, whether whatever uh, amount that you donate this month, including the for the classes for Create-a-thon, um, they're entered to win many of our these amazing prizes that we've collected throughout the community. So um, they're local uh, prizes from local artists, from local businesses, gift cards, and all of these donations are going to go towards furthering our community, our free community programming, and help us donate art kits to community partners like Captain Human Services. And lastly, I just would really love to thank our event sponsors, which is the Open Door Bookstore, which is right on J Street in downtown Schenectady and Gateway Dermatology. Um, and then for our first segment for Saturday morning, I'm really excited to hand it over to Julie Lewis, uh, who will be showing us a bit about some, some amazing clay and mindfulness. <laughs> <laughs> um, and make art clay labyrinths, labyrinths. <laughs> and then um, just want to remind everyone if you could please mute um, unless you have a question for Julie or anyone. Ha, good morning, Penny. <laughs> and yes, you can always use the chat box and I'll be checking the chat. I'll be checking the Facebook. Um, if you have any questions, you can always uh, raise your hand either physically or you can do that on Zoom too if you know how to do that and a little hand emoji will pop up. All right, well, have fun and uh, handing it over to you, Julie. Thanks, Kara. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody feeling today? Eh, uh, good, okay, all right. And this is okay, because you know what? We're gonna do some stuff this morning that hopefully will uh, calm our nervous systems and um, get us sort of ready to re relax and, and rest and enjoy our weekend. So <clears throat> just let my friend Monica in. There we go. Sorry, a couple of little technical things. Okay. And again, for those of you who just hopped on, um, please make sure that your name is correct in your video box so that we can call you by your correct name. And I also am going to apologize in advance for some background noise. I have a, a, a preteen playing video games <laughs> in the room with me. So, you know, real life, we're gonna do our best. <laughs> um, so uh, this morning, we're going to learn a little bit about the power of mindfulness and art combined together and why they have such an incredible effect on our emotional state, our spiritual state and our physical state. And there's a lot of research um, that indicates that, you know, art as we, you know, are coming to find out, and especially uh, art therapists are really using the power of making things with our hands to heal ourselves. And um, there is actually a specific sort of brain body connection that when we're doing something with our hands, it activates various parts of our brains and, um, and also some of the feel good chemicals that help us to sort of rest and regulate our nervous system. So clay is one of those things. And, and it, again, it's you know why we all sort of go back to our Play-Doh days in preschool. We love to just sit there. And at the beginning of, of this segment, Quite a few friends had their hands going with their clay and it's instinctive, right? To just start playing with it. 
Um, so, uh, it, you know, it's something you can, I think I encourage people to have something on hand like this, whether it's Sculpey or homemade Play-Doh or air dry clay is a great tool to just have around for stressful moments um, when you need to kind of need something, when you need to need. So um, I wanted to just start off, I have um, eight friends of all ages here. So I just wanted to start off a little bit about using our breath because one thing we're gonna do when we learn how to use our labyrinth is um, that our combining our breathing and timing our breathing with the movements of our fingers um, is really important. So we're gonna do what I call a couple of easy breaths. Easy breaths are using um, just our noses, okay? So this part can be a little bit tricky for friends who are just kind of learning how to do some breathing. If it's comfortable for you, you might want to close your eyes. If it's not comfortable to close your eyes, you can just lower your gaze, which means just kind of looking down um, like a halfway close of your eyelids. And you're going to just take a couple of breaths in and out your nose at your own pace. So it, I don't want you to worry about timing it or anything like that. Just feel how it feels that for the air to come in through your nose and out through your nose. So this means that we're just gonna keep our lips together. We're gonna try not to let air come out of our mouth. And we're just gonna take a few more of those easy breaths Great. Good job. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our hands. We're going to put our hands on our rib cage. Okay. So that's where you can feel the bones in your chest. And our lungs are right inside underneath those bones. And so when we start to focus on our breathing, we can really feel our bodies move. So this is a part of the brain body connection that we're sort of moving towards now. Okay, so we're gonna continue to do those easy breaths, slowly in through your nose and slow as you can out through your nose. Filling up those lungs. And then feeling your body expanding when you breathe in and contracting as you breathe out. So make it natural. Don't try to force your breath. This is just an opportunity to connect your breathing and your mind and your body. Good. Okay, so I hope that sort of helped everyone come into the room and into the space and slow our breathing down a little bit. I noticed that it was a little bit of effort. I had some um, little sensations in my shoulders were, were a little achy. So if you're feeling that, you might wanna just lift your shoulders up to your ears and then take a deep breath and let it out and roll those shoulders back like you're making big circles with your shoulders. <laughs> Good job, I see lots of friends getting the shoulders into it. I need to roll my neck a little bit too, gently. Okay, so anytime you're feeling a little bit of stress, you can come back to those breaths, okay? So let's talk a little bit about why labyrinths and, um, and other things that we can make with our clay help us to calm down. So a labyrinth, and I'm gonna just start to do a little bit of screen sharing here. I can't feel off. So, uh, this image is a little bit fuzzy, but a labyrinth is um, usually something that we would walk through. 
it looks a little bit like a maze, but a labyrinth is not a maze. Mazes have sort of dead ends that we come across where we can't keep going through, right? Everybody's done like a corn maze or something like that in the past where you get stuck and you're like, oh shoot, I gotta turn around. So a labyrinth is actually one single spiraling course that we can walk through that takes us to the middle and then walks us back out to the outside of whatever the pattern is that we're walking through. So it's the idea of coming into the center of something and then moving back out. And that's one of the reasons why I had you feel the ribs as you were breathing in and out. It helps to center us. And that's the same idea that we want to try to create with our finger labyrinth. So finger labyrinths, I'm just going to go to our next picture here. These are some classic labyrinth designs. These look a little intricate and we're not going to make something that's that that fancy today. We're going to make oh, a pretty labyrinth. simple finger labyrinth. Um, but just so you know, there's lots of patterns out there that you can even use paper and your finger to just trace around. So excuse me one second. I got the background noise going. Okay, so I'm just going to show you a few examples of where we're going to be going here with our project. These are some simple finger labyrinths that you can do with clay and you'll notice that they're painted. So you can, if you have acrylic paint or even watercolor or a tempera paint, you can paint your labyrinth when we're done with this today. You'll also notice that there are little stones or sticks or flower uh, petals. Um, that sometimes people use in the labyrinth. And um, again, that is just for decoration, but it can also be a tactile part of your finger labyrinth. Um, and so anytime you sort of come across a little bump, maybe you pause and you just explore that a little bit and then continue on to the next part of your labyrinth. So you can see you can really create any kind of shape that you want with your uh, clay labyrinth. And um, I'm going to let you sort of choose how you would like to uh, start the basis of your clay um, labyrinth. And what we want to start to do at first is to, um, to get our clay out and start to roll it into a ball and then flatten it. And uh, while you're doing that, if you have a helper nearby, I'm going to just mention a few other things that you're going to want to use today. So I'm just going to spotlight myself for a moment so that you can see some of the tools that I have. Okay, so I've got my ball of clay and I'm using just a, a wet paper towel to keep it um, nice moist right now um, while I'm gathering my other stuff. But you can go ahead and start to knead your clay and roll it into a ball and then we're going to flatten it as much as possible. So um, I'll keep going with some other tools. I use just plastic forks and knives to create some uh, texture or to use to cut off pieces of my clay. Um, also, I use chopsticks. So anytime we order out, I save these chopsticks because they're really good for creating designs and making lines in your clay. So I've got that. I've also got another little wooden tool. Sometimes these come with scratch boards and this is just a finer point um, for you. You're also gonna want a little bit of water nearby. I also use um, water in a little spray bottle um, because sometimes if you dip your fingers in water, you'll get a little too much on there and it's hard to find the right combination with air dry clay. So I like to have a little spritzer of water nearby just to um, get a, a lighter mist of water over the top. And I have collected a few things that I may use. These are some dried um, Easter lily petals. And I love them because they retain their smell. So there's also this um, other sensation that comes into um, my labyrinth and I enjoy incorporating that. You can also put essential oils in your um, air dry clay. And so there, there's a calming effect there too. If you have lavender or something else that um, is calming to you that you wanna use a little bit in your clay, you can do that. 
I also have some little stones and glass beads nearby. I'm not sure if I'm going to use those, but those are things I might want to incorporate into my creation. So you want to make sure you have those tools nearby. Also, as you work with air dry clay, um, you'll notice that it sticks to your hands quite a bit. So you want to have a towel or paper towels nearby. So I'm just going to give you a moment to get your tools. I'm going to do another screen share here. Okay, so I'm going to screen share now my overhead. So you're going to get to see my hands work in here. Okay, so I have quite a bit of clay, and this is going to be as big or as small as you want. Okay, so we're working in a and a way to just sort of flatten and smush. The other thing you'll see, and I may end up moving this, but if your clay is sticking to your countertop, you wanna put it on a placemat or a little bit of parchment paper. Um, and there's, I'm gonna get specific about this here. Wax paper and tin foil are not good because you will end up having your, your clay stick to your wax paper. So you wanna just be careful about what you use there. So I'm flattening my clay and it's sticking quite a bit. So I think I'm going to move this. So what you're doing now is just working your clay into a nice flat, fairly even, but you don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfectly flat a nice even um, shape. You want it to the thickness of it to be relatively even. So what I mean by that, oh, I forgot one other tool I can show you. This is one of those scrapers that you sometimes get at the baking store. And if you're really, really sticky, you can lift your clay with that. Okay. So I'm going to do this now and turn my clay around. So you can see I'm still pretty thick and I want it to maybe end up being about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch might be too thin. So one, one thing to just kind of keep in mind is the thinner your clay gets as we start to press our finger into it, you're, you're, you might go through the other side. So you just want to be a little conscious. Better to start off a little bit thicker because we're going to, you know, as we push our fingers through the clay, we, we want to be careful not to go to the other side. Okay, so I'm kind of turning it like a wheel and just sort of flattening out. Now, if I wanted to create a shape, what I would do is once I get it to the thickness that I want, I can use that. So let's say I want to create a heart. I'm just going to use my plastic knife and start to cut out pieces. And then I really want to use my fingers as much as possible to shape the rest of it. Every once in a while, pick up your clay off of the surface because again, air dry clay sticks quite a bit more. Um, if you've not worked with air dry clay before, um, it's actually got a paper component to it, which is what makes it air dry. So it does have a little bit of natural clay in it, but it also has paper. Um, so it's sort of a, a blend of materials that allows things to air dry. 
for us. So I really loved that heart shape. So I'm going to go for that today. You don't have to do that. You can make a simple circle. I want to show you one that I made over the summer. This is a really, really oh simple, God. basic labyrinth where we're going to be starting in the middle, coming to the outside, and then back to the center. So you can make it as simple as that. Here's another example of one that I made this summer, painted it gold. And I found some little acorns and sticks because we were making these outside. So that was kind of fun. I used um, some objects that were out in nature. All right, so I've got my shape almost where I want it. I got doggy hair stuck in there too. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Okay. So I think I'm pretty satisfied with my shape. I, I may want to refine it as I go along, but the outside, the outline, the contour of my shape is something that I like. Okay. All right, so I just wanna see where everybody's at. And if you have your screen turned on, just give me a thumbs up if you are at a place where your shape is ready. Oh, Timothy, good job. Christy and Liv, awesome. Okay, if you're still working. Basil and Spencer still working. Okay, we're almost there, so. And Kara, are we good in the chat? Has anybody got any questions or things coming up? We are good. Okay. So if you do cut out and feel free to ask questions in the chat or you can use the little raise your hand feature um, and that helps me too because that lets me know that you've put something in the chat or so you may end up with some extra clay. You can make another little labyrinth. The other thing you can do, and I love to do these with kids, is you make a worry stone. And a worry stone is another sort of tactile thing that we can make. And literally it's just taking your little extra bits of leftover clay. And you'll see that this piece of clay is formed exactly for my thumb and my pointer and my middle finger to rest in it. It's something you can keep in your pocket. So if you have an anxious moment or a stressful moment, it can always be there for you. And it's literally a, you know, something that you can just have in it in your pocket, a tactile thing to rub and um, help you sort of calm and, and center yourself. So you can do these and then paint them or, you know, whatever you'd like to do with your leftover bits. You can also, there's another fun little thing I like to do if you have leftovers. You can roll little pieces of your clay and then you can take a, a pencil or actually I'm going to use the tip of a, a paintbrush and you can make a little hole in the center of your clay so that you have a clay bead. Okay. And once these dry, you can paint them and you can create your own mala. If you're not familiar with a mala, it's a, um, uh, an Eastern tool for meditation. I should have brought my mala downstairs, but I don't have it. But mala beads, you'll often see yogis wearing them on their wrists or around their necks. And they're used for counting your breaths as you meditate. So you can make your own mala necklace or bracelet out of your air dry clay. Okay, so just a couple of other things you can use your clay for, um, for some art and mindfulness. Okay, so I am ready here. I think everybody else is too. And what I'm gonna do now is get my water nearby and my paper towel. It's me. Okay getting my hands a little bit wet now because what I wanna do is be able to run my finger through my clay. So I'm gonna spritz it. 
this is actually rose water. And so I use, it has a nice scent to it. So it's really calming for me. So you can actually get this in lavender or rose water. So it's really nice to just have a sensory, another sensory experience. So you can see as I get my clay a little bit wet, I don't want it too wet, but I want it enough so that I can make some indentations with my finger easily and my finger will slide across the clay, okay? So I'm gonna start in the middle, but you can also start on the edge. It's really up to you. And the nice thing is as we start to create our labyrinth, you can always erase it and start over. That's the beauty of clay. You can spray it down, get some more water, flatten it out and start over. So this isn't a permanent, there's a Zen sort of Buddhist element to this as well, which is that, uh, that of impermanence, which, um, is a good lesson in life, right? There's things we can always change. Nothing, yeah. These 